Charles Studd came to Christ when he was a student at Eton College. However, he allowed cricket to take too great a place in his life. It became his idol. It became the most important thing in his life, more important than living for the Lord. He came back to the Lord while at Cambridge University through the illness of his brother. He asked the Lord to forgive him and started witnessing. Charles later realised that he had needed to give every part of his life over to Christ. He saw that he could not serve the Lord in his own strength. It had to be the Lord working out his will in him and through him. When Charles came back to the Lord, he wanted to serve him with all his heart. As he read the Bible and prayed, he felt that rather than getting a job after university, the Lord wanted him to use all his time to bring the gospel to others. He took as a special Bible verse, What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mark 8, 36. Belonging to the Lord was worth more than owning all the riches in the world. He decided to find out God's will for his life. It wasn't long after he'd given his life completely to the Lord that he felt the Lord was calling him to go as a missionary to China. Maybe there is a Christian boy or girl here and the Lord has been leading you to understand that he has an extra special plan for your life. He wants you to use all your time to bring the gospel to others. He asks some Christians to do that, you know. If the Lord is calling you to be a missionary or a full-time worker, you should thank him. You can trust him to work things out if you obey his will. Charles attended a meeting where a missionary going back to China shared the great need for more workers there. As he prayed about what God wanted him to do about China, he knew there was one thing alone which could keep him from going, and that was his love for his mother. His father had died only two years after he was saved, and so there was only his mother left. It was then that he read the passage in the Bible which says, He that loveth his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Matthew 10, 37 After that, he knew it was God's will for him to go to China. He wanted to obey the Lord above everything else. He knew too that he could trust God to take care of his mother back home in England. It wasn't easy. The more sure he was about God wanting him to go to China, the more strongly his family was against him leaving for the mission field. Several people tried to persuade Charles not to go. His own mother pleaded with him to stay in England. Some Christian friends said he could do a lot for God among young people in Britain instead of going to China. His oldest brother said, You're making a mistake. I'll break your mother's heart. I don't want to be stubborn and go out just on my own decision. I only want to do God's will. Let's ask God, Charles answered. So both of them knelt down and prayed that the Lord would make his will to be done. That night Charles could not sleep. He kept thinking of the verse in the Bible. Ask of me and I will give you the uttermost parts of the earth. Psalm 2 verse 8. He took this as a promise from the Lord that people in far off China would hear the gospel and put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Charles was sure that the Lord was speaking to him through this part of his word. He knew he must obey what the Lord had asked him to do, no matter what his friends and relatives thought. It's not always easy to follow God's will. Others may try to stop you. Some of them may even be from your own family. Would you be prepared like Charles to leave your family, even though they did not understand that the Lord had called you? When Charles Studd was sure that God was calling him to go to China, he went to talk with Hudson Taylor, the director of China Inland Mission. He was accepted as one of their missionaries. Stanley Smith, a friend from the university, had already answered God's call to go to China. In a few weeks, five more young men who had also studied at the university had joined them. The newspapers printed the story of these seven brilliant young men who were giving everything up to go to China as missionaries. They called them the Cambridge Seven. Cambridge and Oxford are the two top universities in Britain. Other students in the universities and young people throughout the country were touched that such fine young men should give their lives to bring the gospel to China. 
other Christian young people in England realised they too had to face the question, am I willing to give my life to tell those who have never heard about the Lord Jesus? Would you be ready to answer yes to the Lord if he showed you that he wanted you to go as a missionary to some far off land or to some difficult group of people? The news spread about the seven students. Even Queen Victoria was pleased to receive a copy of the booklet telling of how the Cambridge Seven had been saved and had received the call of God to go to China. Charles Studd was an unusual man and many special things happened in his life. You mustn't think that such things have to happen in your life for God to use you. God has work for you to do. It will be different from that of Charles. Some Christian professors in the University of Edinburgh wrote to Charles Studd and Stanley Smith and asked them to speak in a meeting of university students. The two men arrived early for the meeting and spent the early part of the afternoon in prayer. They knew it was very important to spend time praying when they wanted to be used by the Lord. The hall was packed full of students. They had come to hear these two well-known sportsmen who were giving everything up to serve the Lord in China. The students were deeply impressed by their love of Christ. Their idea of missionaries had been people with long faces singing hymns and not young wealthy men giving up fame, family and friends to preach the gospel to others. After the meeting was arranged in Edinburgh and 3,000 students came, Charles told them how the Lord Jesus Christ had changed his life and had shown him his will. He told how he had received a burning love for his Saviour and for others who did not know him. Stanley Smith told the good news of Christ and how he had died for them on the cross and risen again. He is a Saviour able to change lives today. At the end of the meeting, many students broke down and cried because they were not saved. Charles, Stanley and other Christians had the joy of speaking to student after student to explain how they could turn from their sins and how Jesus was their only way of salvation. Meetings were arranged in other universities in Britain. It was a wonderful opportunity for Charles and Stanley to tell the gospel. Young men especially came in large numbers to see and hear them. Many came to Christ. In Liverpool, for example, at the end of the meeting, 60 students asked the Lord to save them from their sins. They wanted the Lord to change their lives. God used Charles and Stanley to speak to Christians as well. One of them was a pastor called F. B. Meyer. He saw something in the life of Charles Studd which was different. At the end of the meeting, he asked Charles what was the secret of his life. Charles answered, The secret is, God has got all the seat he stood that there is to have. That was a great challenge to Mayor. He spent that night in prayer asking God to take over every part of his life. But there was one part of his life he wanted to keep for himself. Finally, he had to give in and let the Lord have that part too. That was an important night for him. From then on, God began to use him in a special way to help others to trust in the Saviour and live for him. Are you willing to go as a missionary if the Lord calls you? Would you say yes to the Lord if it meant leaving home, friends and family to be able to tell others about the Saviour? Do you know the secret? Can you say, God has got all of me that there is to have. Let the Lord have his way in every part of your life. And he will use you to help others, just as he used Charles and F.B. Marr. The last meetings before the Cambridge Seven left for China were held in Cambridge, Oxford and London. What was going to happen to Charles and the other missionaries when they got to China? If you want to know more, then you have to listen again tomorrow and we'll have another part of this wonderful story of God's working in the life of Charles Studd. See you then.